And I would say let's start. We are on time zone. So happy that you're all here and I'm interested and set a custom method about how to build a second brain. So I'd like to start with, with a short story, how it come to the situation as an, as an intro. Just. So um, I believe you're all aware about LearnOS, you have used it in several ways, at least most of you. So in LearnOS framework, the Memex, the memory extender is embedded and um, is shown as this part. So this is where also I got then into it and thought, yeah, that's great. I put all my information into my Memex, collect it, store it, having able to retrieve it in future when I need it. And yeah, started to put all things in. So I thought, yeah, that's great. Getting things done on all of this um, learn passes uh, by then, and uh, put things in. And so at some time, when I put more and more things in, it started to feel depressing, to be honest. Um, I put more and more things in, started to get bigger and bigger, and I started to avoid going to my Memex because it's hard, it got hard to find the information even with search bars and all this. Put me down, I started to put less and less into it, and yeah, I was not feeling pretty good at the end. Then, luckily, Simon Rickert had sent um, information, so why not use Obsidian to manage your Memex? And I thought, hey, great, managing your Memex, that's what I need. And I thought, yeah, I, I felt um, inspired. Um, I've watched videos for it um, and started looking at this. I got to know there's more programs than Obsidian. So it's sort of great, great, and I just started right away into it. Um, but soon after, I didn't thought, yeah, okay, uh, but how? So, so way it, uh, doing it, set a custom method, linking your thinking, link stuff, link information. Found it pretty great how to get all stuff in the Memex reachable, but the way how it was done got really hard to understand. So I started to read books, Sanka Arens, maybe some has, has read them as well, um, watched videos, podcasts, articles for it. I've started a learning circle, which was maybe the best thing to do, um, as you're all here in LearnOS. So in the last con, um, a learning circle discussing with others, working it, and by now I can say after this learning pass, I'm best friend with my Memex. It's really helping me. It's the way where I'm going to when I think, when I need information, I find my information. And this is how this learning path has started, what we have created, building out of the information, out of what we collected, making the entry, trying to make the entry easier for everyone who is struggling. The same who want to have a better understanding of or a better usage of this um, Memex. So, this one, what I wanted to talk uh, to you with an um, introduction. So let's go to my next part. Just go to present mode. So, but the question is, why why to use a settle custom method um, on your Memex? Or uh, why is the Memex maybe not enough just just to have it? The point which we observed is, you put informations in. In the memex, um, articles, books, and so on, it's always big parts of information which are like standing books on a bookshelf. And from there, it's nice to have some ready to have some, but if you start searching for it, you it's, it's often the situation you have big chunks of text, big information, maybe even not digital but real books on there, and trying to find the information. Of course, there are some information in your Memex, like the phone list. This is easy. It's just information you need to look up and, and done. Nothing to extract more information about. But if you have read an article over 10 pages and think about, yeah, somewhere there was this one 
information I need right now, it's more tedious to find it. Even worse, if you have read um, some book, 500 pages, deeply packed with information, and even if you have marked it, it's start to get pretty hard. So the question comes up what you put in your Memex, how to how to use it and not get overwhelmed. So point is to extract the meaningful information out of this information. The thoughts which have an impact to you and have this one in a note. This is maybe the most crucial parts in working with the settle custom method. And um, that you not just have the core information, the original information, but to extract the information of it in a way that you can use it further. Um, rule of thumb is try to make it um, in a way that you can understand in 10 years as well what was the point which interested you, what is your understanding to get from the author context in your own context. What, what does it mean for you? And if this is done, you get the possibility to find the meaningful information right away. Of course, uh, it's also interesting. It's getting more and more. So if as long as you go in this method, the more information you get to into it and the harder it can get to find also there's information where we are speaking about linking the information, building maps of contents or index pages to generate entry, entry points for it. So also there, there are possibilities how to get it. And in every way, it's make it just easier to understand it, see it, what's meaningful, and help you growing in your knowledge and making it able for you to use it. If you have just some information in, in your Memex, where you from time to time look into it, read it again and again, it's you're losing time if you extract the meaningful information. And then you can start thinking more freely on it. If you extract it in a way, what does it mean for you? And connect it to other thoughts. You can generate new thoughts, new insights. Let's say an example which I like. So I'm coming from software development areas. There is some kind of DevOps. Uh, maybe you've heard of it. The interesting part of it is to automatize approvals. And very often, point about I'm facing is yeah, but we cannot automatize approvals. This needs a human. And in the book, I have found the information and, and comment on it. Um, when we are able to automate a jumbo chat landing automatically with hundreds of people in it, and the machine can do judgments of the conditions, air, weather, and so on, why can we not just create an approval process automatized for some more safe area where not people are just directly involved? So this is an, for me a point which I have as one important part in my knowledge. Um, in my Memex, where I started to link for it, what stands behind it, um, when it's right, when it's wrong, because of course there are also ways where it's not right to um, make automatic approvals. I'm sure I would not like to have a surgery where an automate is uh, making the approval or not. So there are things where I can balance and then think the thoughts further and can reuse it later on and can build on my thoughts, not find information again and again, not thinking it through again, but coming into meetings again blind. I can just open my information. I know the topic. I know my thoughts about it. I read just through it. This information is well prepared so that I can fast capturing them and use them and explain them. And best of thing, if someone has another meaning and is explaining it, I can build it into my mindset, into my worldview and extend it and Balance and what does it mean for me? Is it changing it? This, this is why I believe this is a great method, and I would like to encourage you in trying it because um, I believe the internalization of knowledge, so just think it once, think through it and further, these connections between the concepts. This is bringing the memex to the next level and is helping you um, to the next level in using the knowledge, building and growing knowledge and contributing to the community, to your surroundings and to yourself.
with this one, I'm handing over to Maris, who will now uh, explain you how is it done. And thanks for listening. If you have questions, you can also ask me questions or write it in the chat that we can answer it then on the go. Okay, so thank you, Andreas. Then I oh, just have to prepare quickly. Da, 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 da. Presentation starts. So share. Do you see my screen? It should only be learn prof structure. Yeah, learn prof okay, structure so, <laughs> okay, so I won't show you every single part of the learn prof. I think this uh, would be really boring for you. So <laughs> I will just give you a real quick overview of the structure of the learn prof. What was our thoughts? So first of all, uh, I think this is something that's the same uh, with every learn prof is first session is always um, we give you, uh, you have the kickoff meeting. It's um, like under the motto of organize your team. So just um, make sure you organize your dates. Uh, you do um, define roles like moderation, timekeeper, etc. cetera. Um, <clears throat> you also plan your communication channels. Um, for example, um, what kind of meeting tool you use and also is there another channel necessary for example using um what is this do you see the uh discord server Mars, are you showing discord or has someone no something is uh, i think someone took over this is Wait, I start again. So okay. <laughs> so now you should, should see like a black screen again. Yeah, thanks. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, and um, yeah, of course, the defined group rules. For example, what happens if um, they need to be cancelled, etc. Um, what happened then? So what is now this? Uh, what are the specials of our learn path? First of all, we do have like main, three main sections. So section one, I would say, is like explaining what are the principles of the Tettle Custom, making your first steps towards a routine by reading, taking notes, writing down permanent notes, and so on. So there are a few exercises um, where you just train this kind of habit. Going on in the second part, then we have to, oh, <laughs> it's not ink your thinking, I lost the L, it's link your thinking. So how do you <laughs> link your notes uh, within your title cast? And so that you really start try, uh, to make sense out of it. And an important part is, especially when you use uh, Obsidian, that you also uh, think of what are your entry points. And therefore, we use uh, Map of Contents, explain also the method of Map of Contents. Um, so you do not only have uh, linked thoughts, but also a kind of structure where you easily can find your thoughts again, because this is also a very important thing. And the third section is really working on creating your workflow and start thinking within your settled custom. I think Andreas already explained a lot of it uh, in his part, but um, this is also, this is just, um, I, th I would say the whole learn path is created on, um, or is based on our own experiences on one side and also um, some thoughts about the tactics and so on, how you really can go into the settled custom. Um, because even if it's an easy thing to explain, the hardest part of it is really to stay stick to it and to create a routine that serves you and also uh, evolve, can evolve and develop over time. Yeah, so <clears throat> last but not least, we also do have a final session, so retrospective, where you can really show your work, talk about your experience with the learn path, with the settled custom, and also share what are your next steps. I think this is also uh, really important just 
to keep on going after 12 weeks of um, experiencing our learning path and the title custom. <clears throat> and last but not least, what are the structure of every single lesson? It's very easy. So we do have a check in posted the question, what have I done since last week? Then you do have an exercise. And this is also something we always try to uh, <laughs> um, um, uh, really explain to people exercise, the exercises we have integrated are just a suggestion. So if there are exercises that don't really serve you, that don't fit, that don't feel right, then just skip it or do something else that's more helpful for you. It's only a suggestion. Whatsoever, the last part of it is a check out question. So really to think about what to plan to do until next week. So what's the next small step that I take um, to progress through the 12 weeks of the learning path. Right, that's it. So if you do have any questions now, please just ask and we will try to give our best. <laughs> Some hands. So my question here would be, uh, how do you decide on what content you want to keep, enter into your Zettelkasten? Because these days we are flooded with information and we have to make choices on what we want to enter into the Zettelkasten. And uh, are we going to remove it at some future point in time? Are we going to reclassify it? How do you decide on what to put into your settle custom in the first place? Mm, that's a good question because it's also coming to the point. The pitfall, uh, good or uh, quite pitfall is uh, you just start to put everything in what you stumble over it. Um, then you're flooding all your information. A uh, rule of thumb I find helpful is when this information has an impact to you, if it's bringing you a new idea which you're following, if it's connected to some topic you're working on, or is, is it something which is really resonant deeply to you, then it's a good point in bringing it in in the first place. If it's just a side topic which you find interesting, but it's just the, oh, okay, it's uh, so length to the moon. Yes, it was interesting, but it's really not um, connected to anything your, your most interests are in. Then it's maybe not so helpful to bring it in. If it's in something still that you feel, yeah, this is, this is so interesting, I keep it in, um, then bring it in. It's flexible. It is more rule of thumb, bring in what is impacting you and or is connected to the fields you are interested in. So, so when we think about, or if you have seen how Niklas Luhmann has built his settle custom, which is also quite interesting in this field, he had 12 main topics. So these topics were still um, very high level and big, but it was still 12 directions where he clustered all his information in. And with this one, it's helping to keep it in some focus. I'm not sure if this really this make your call short notice if this really works, how you process the information. I have been trying to use the, the para method from Tiago Forte. I'm not sure if you are familiar, yes. uh, where you basically separate into stuff that short term use and long term use and just of interest uh, kind of stuff. Um, do you reflect that in your learn path too, or is this something that you rather ignore? Uh, so we are going more on the principles and the learning path, start deeper, because of what Tiago Forte had built is very specific how he is interpreting it and is training how to use it with the para method. 
it's one way how to structure, how to see it. It has pro and cons. Uh, we decided to not go for spe one specific one. Otherwise, it would also be the question why not to use what Sinker Arendt has done? Why not to use what Nick, uh, Milo um, has done there with his linking of thinking and many others and so on? So we are, are going to more going to the basic, have structured it in a way. I would compare it to the getting things done from David Allen to think about what components you want to use and build your own understanding for it and helping there to to get a start in it because a start can be pretty hard to as you asked already which information should i put in okay now i have information in what not to do it sounds so easy but how to do it um this is where we bring exercises in a flow in to think of it and give some guidelines to do it and then yes as with every area learning then it's doing so for, but for your initial question no we are not reflecting on the para method and not reflecting on when to process it it's more like and the way you have you have informations which um you read you mark them so this i understand are some fleeting notes and on on the short term, you should visit it again till you have, when you have still it in the memory, what it's about, and decide if you bring this in your memex or not. We get an echo. Thanks. So this is more as a connection to um, when to use it, use it now or later, and then all informations are equal in the system. Uh, it's not then stored with archived when I need it. It's just in the system. And if you have the thought, if you extract the information, you find it if you have structured it. Again, yeah, you raised the hand. Yeah, hi. Uh, so I've never used Obsidian before. I'm just taking my notes in one note. Uh, and my question is the following. So in my work, I have to do research quite often and I need, so I'm taking notes on different topics and then I need to, you know, connect the dots and synthesize everything and come up with a concept. Uh, do you have any suggestions? Are there maybe any applications that could make my life easier, do it faster? Because this uh, at the moment I'm just doing it, you know, in a classical way, just have a look at it and think how I can connect it. Any um, suggestions, um, artificial intelligence or whatever that you use already? So it's a it's a bigger question because it has many philosophies into it. Um, you could do it real old school with papers and real settle. Um, where you have spread it everywhere before you and connect it then visually. Of course, you can do the same digitally, making <laughs> in, in my role as an example, having also your, your thoughts and things. Uh, OneNote, sure, is the first one to go. OneNote is great for having the possibilities on the pages, also making graphically. With the linking, it's possible to link there. Um, at some point, in my opinion, it's starting to fall short because links are just one way. If you change namings of the pages, the links starting to break from time to time. This is making hard. Obsidian would be one possible thing. It's what I'm using. I like it, but there are also other programs like Rome, Logsec, and others. The interesting part is coming when you are able in the program you're using to take your notes, get, uh, getting in on a big canvas and start putting things there. Um, but it's also very strongly connected how you're working. Some people are fine if just having it listed um, from top down and starting to sort it up and down. Some people are more convenient in having it on a canvas and sorting to it and connecting point and things. I'm working more visually for me um obsidian with the extension plugin excalibur is very helpful because then i can make sketches into it sketch notes arrows can build information can pull in information it's one solution there are many solutions um so to give you an advice what i would do is thinking what is your natural way of working how you understand information best and choose a tool which is supporting it 
as best as possible. You mentioned some programs. Uh, could you please also put it, the names in the chat? So I think yeah, I will, I will, I will put later. some in, in Discord, yes. Thank you. One thing I would like to point out here is uh, when we think of a memory extension, it's something that is not only dealing with stuff we do at work, it also deals with stuff that we may be doing in our private lives. And if you keep the stuff in OneNote and it's a company OneNote, you really must be sure that you replicate it in some way that it's also available for you when you leave the company. And because otherwise your brain extension, your memory is in this database and it's not that easy to extract. And that's where Obsidian, which uses this markdown approach uh, of um, filing the documents is very helpful because you can extract it easily. This is often a very interesting point. What is happening with your knowledge when you leave the company and what are you doing with knowledge you're using for private life? And very often, most of us have an overlap with our interests, what we work for and what we're doing in private life. Uh, or we have made an interesting choosing of the work life. So yes, it's a pretty interesting point. And one note, it's a locked system. Often companies are also not allowing to sync to the private nodes and still it's very interesting how to synchronize information and how to make sure that confidential informations are not leaving company networks, which can also be a challenge. Obsidian, as I know it best, there are possible ways how to mark files and how to have them separated and still interconnect them that this can be split. I'm sure with one node, are also possibilities. The question is always how how to make sure that you can build your knowledge and take it with you as the knowledge itself is your own. I have a question. Um, how how is your workflow with longer text, for example, ebooks? How how do you connect to your um, settle custom? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me. I found the way how Tiago Forte is suggesting it with progressive summarization and at the same point how Zenka Ahrens is suggesting it with a marker combine it. So it's depending for me. I'm for some texts I'm using progressive summarization. This means you read the text and mark what's interesting in you for you. And the second run you just mark uh, to, you start to reduce it to the most meaningful things, and in the end, you can write the summary out of it in your own thoughts. This can be pretty helpful. And also, what Sanka Ahrens is doing uh, is suggesting um, you mark the, the points which are impacting you, and uh, every evening, a few days, you write your own thoughts of it and summarize it for you in your own words. Both workflows I'm using and I find them helpful. So it has some pro and cons. So for customization as an example for text, which is for me not easy to understand, it's helpful to write it to market with progress summarization or where I have not so much time because you can read it over several days, weeks and still progressing it. As you have always found and marked the important stuff before and can just read through it and get the connection point again. And reading a book, um, just extracting more and more information that you summarize each chapter, each point, you can extract books. At the same time, the interesting question comes up, how much of this book should you collect? Should you really collect the complete book? If it's a new topic and you need to understand this topic fully, maybe you will have 100 notes offered it, out of it nearly replicated the book in a small summary with this one, or maybe you have just read this book and everything is known for you and you have just this one idea stuck here and you have one note. So there it's depending really if you should or can, which method you are using, how much information do you need? What is really impacting you? 
Do you connect to the original source or is that's just a manual process? Um, also depends. It always depends. <laughs> it depends also on the source. When I have um, your workflow. A book, when I have a physical book, I always make a literate note. Um, having it digitally means for me in the metadata in the top, I have a reference to the book, to the year, to the author that I know from where is this originally coming. When I process this further, I link to it and I keep this. When I'm processing it digitally, sometimes I have it in Sotero complete website where I then have over pipe text um, the link to there and I can jump to it. At some other points, I'm I'm using Kindle. I know that also other um, readers are possible, but I'm using Kindle. Um, when I've bought a book there, I am using the Kindle plugin. I read through the reader, mark the sections, import them, um, make the ones which information which I really want to have permanent into it. And there I have the possibility to link really to it so that I can follow the link back and even come to the point in, in the book. Those are my workflows. The most important idea behind here is um, I feel it's very useful to have the link to the source from where this thought is coming because you're writing often this uh, idea down in your own understanding and at some point in time you read through it and see yes yeah, it's coming from uh, let's use from Sönke Ahrens and you think yeah um, but now I think different on it um, and you just want to reread it again and then you know from where it's coming, where to reread it, and maybe now you have another interpretation because your understanding is, is, has changed and the meaning is changing. So this is why I believe having the source is important, independent if you read, if you do a knowledge work, so academic work or just for private or other work, it's always helpful to know from where things are coming. Thank you. Then, I'm the next. Francesco. Yeah, hello. Um, just uh, reply to Eugenia. Um, I use, I used uh, Obsidian or tried Obsidian, but it was not satisfying. But that's the second point. The first point, I'm using ya now Notion. And Notion um, has uh, also AI integrated. <laughs> so Notion is a kind of uh, one note, but better and more interconnected. And since uh, about three months, there is AI integrated and it makes also uh, rest, uh, how do you say, resume. <laughs> um, and um, yes, that's something to discover, I think. And now a question to Andreas. Um, I tried Obsidian, but I had one problem. I work often with screenshots and sketch notes. And I find it not easy to integrate it like in Notion, like copy paste the screenshot. You have you, you have to uh, um, to have a repository where you uh, copy it in and then you interconnect it. It's not like uh, the, the maybe now it's changed, but the the handling with screenshots and sketch notes and photographs, it's a little bit harder than one note. Is it? Is it right or, or, or how do you handle that? So if you just use poor obsidian, it can get hard if you would like to, if you have two pictures and wanted to combine them in one. This is without any support, it's not possible as you have just pictures in it. It's a direct reference and you can also put PDFs and so on directly in it. Um, this is maybe why I extended uh, my obsidian with Excalibur. Um, also, then by now, um, also Obsidian has involved with the canvas. Could be done the same. You can put uh, images into it. So can uh, canvas is um, uh, is belonging to the Obsidian core functionality. So also you, by now you can put in pictures, sketch notes, stuff you have uh, directly on this canvas. In Excalibur, for me it's uh, kind of similar because you can also then paint directly in the on this canvas with what Canvas cannot do. So with the Canvas extension, I believe it can do what Notion can do, but I'm not so familiar with Notion. And with the Excalibur plugin, you have just a big Canvas, which is um, vector 
based on vector, you can scale it as infinite as you would like, and you can put several medias in it. You can embed YouTube videos. You can sketch on stuff. You can put images in it and so on. So there here I have quite more possibility, uh, many possibilities, but I, I would like to make sure it's not about that Obsidian is the only possible tool. It's just one tool and there are many pros and cons for other tools. So importance is try it out. What is good? Um, find a workflow and make it sure that you can take your knowledge with you if you at some point leave one program. This is maybe the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Take care that you are able to extract your knowledge and take it with you. Mm -hmm. So um, what was the, the plugin or the, the extension Xcali? What, what's the exact name? Yeah, Xcali Draw. It's in the um, Discord chat already mentioned from Salt. Um, it's a YouTube channel okay. and below it. So Xcali Draw is also um, it's open source. You can go to xcalitraw.com, I believe. And what Salt has done is writing a plugin for Obsidian how to integrate it. And by the way, I believe in LogSec, it's also integrated even longer, but maybe the point with Salt is he is working heavily on his plugin and, and is extending the functionality in a way I could oh, okay. I find it on the Discord chat. Thank you. Diana, you raise your hand, you're next. Hey, um, have you ever used this method of settle casting with the team? And if so, what are your experience with it? Um, my experience is, uh, yes, I have tried it. Um, my experience is if people are familiar with personal knowledge management, they understand how to do it on a team level. Um, if they are not aware, then the learning curve is, of course, um, then it's, it's a question if the team member would like to learn it at all. And then always what you have with knowledge management in a team, it's living with the contribution of the team members. And you can then, of course, you can use OneNote, other nodes, Obsidian. Um, the question is then about sharing confluence, uh, maybe also well, well known. Um, there are then other tools how to collaborate. And the pure methodology of bringing this information down, curates information, is getting even more important. Curating not for, just for your own, but for the others. Telling them what is important about this one, why should they need them. Then working on this information, bringing the most extent, um, point on, but you shift focus from what is helpful for me, now you think what is helpful for the others. And then it's the, the challenge is when you look at personal knowledge management, how that you are learning how to deal with it. And then challenge with a team is that you bring the team into it, bring them to communicate and take care that team members uh, have the environment to really work on it. Because if it's just done one hour in a month, yeah, and it's not so much happening. It needs to be integrated in the normal workflow, in my opinion. Do you have a workflow uh, or an interface from your personal knowledge man to team knowledge management? What do you mean an interface from a personal knowledge management? Well, interface, um, like like you have your settled custom and you're working in a team and you have your personal settled custom and maybe you have a team tool, like Wiki or on, I don't know. And do you have a workflow or a connector or anything between those two systems? So let's say the interface is a copy paste. I'm copying from my ecosystem to the yeah. um, company ecosystem um, because I, from the IT, I'm not allowed to interconnect this automatically. No, no, I'm not, ta not um, talking about the technical the, interface. Yeah. So um, when I know that my for my team, uh, I'm working in information is important 
then I'm sharing it and I'm always making sure that I also copy it in from where is this information coming. So from where have I'm taking it and look, OK, you, we have here this, this situation in the project. Um, let's use my example from the beginning. Um, how can we automate the approval? Oh, yeah, it's this hard. But look, there's a source where a jumbo jet is automatized to land. Um, and bring some more information about what does it mean? What are my thoughts? And bring this in and say, okay, I, I sharing with you my thoughts, there they are. Let's discuss, let's extend it. And this is how I'm doing it. And then it's, it's, it's this is then running in parallel how the interaction with the team knowledge is also happening. Of course, I'm having my knowledge, my personal knowledge always in mind. I'm not shifting my complete knowledge into the team knowledge. This would be quite too much. I'm going through it. I contribute in the discussions. And when I have something in my own knowledge, I start sharing at maybe snippets where I say why is this important or a longer text or even more about it. it it's depending how, how helpful I believe this information is. Thank you. Someone in the room? Now it's English, it's not so easy for me, but I think it's a difference between uh, personal knowledge management, how to how to learn, how to make sense of all the information you, you get and to do it uh, within a team because the, the team approach is more approach like curating something, making something visible, share your learnings, share your insights. And I think it's it's a little bit different, but it's uh, on the other hand, it's it's very similar as well. Because you, you try to make sense of it, you try to dig deeper into contents, not only sharing it and uh, for whom it may concern or something like this. And in my opinion, it's very important not only let AI do the work, because there are already good tools to summarize something, summarize transcripts. I think it's very important to interact with our own brains, with our own uh, biases with our own patterns we have in our brain and we, we share our personal insights. So I think it's sec a second brain is only a tool, but you can you can share. It's like Legos, Lego pieces, and you share it with your team. So I think it's it's important to make this difference. Yep, I agree. Having just uh, some, let's summarize an AI, some article does not mean that information is in such a way summarized that the team or yourself can work with it. It's just making a bigger text, squeezing it down, but then read by yourself, maybe other points would be more important, more impacting. And the same is for the team scope. Does not mean that the team is needing this information. So we humans are interacting with our teams and try to understand each other. And then, then we have a solution and believe this could be something, this could be helpful. Then it's getting the value. AI can help, I believe. It's a great um, thing, a very interesting thing, which we are facing here with scrolling through information or bringing it down. At the end, it's still what the human brain is making out of it and how it's the information is entered and visible for how to use it. Okay. Have you other questions? Otherwise, I would have a question to you. I have a question. I would like to uh, experience uh, a learning circle with your Settle Custom learning guide. Is it already available or uh, when it's when we can experience it? Yeah, happy, <laughs> happy you're asking. And in fact, it is already posted on the learners framework, uh, on the learners um, repository. But it's in GitHub. Can... Could you? Could you post I, sent a, the, the link I have there. a link in in Discord. It's hosted and it's published. So only thing what it is not, it's not listed as learning paths on the main page. This is because we are finalizing currently the trial passes 
for the as a first trial runs and got some feedback how to improve it and this we will work into and then we will publish it completely still um it's you can find it also very interesting maybe let me just shortly share my screen because we have here an english session one moment If you open the learning path, we have here at the top this uh, symbol with the letters, and there you can switch between German and English. So we have here the translation functionality embedded that you can switch back and forth. And as such, it's it's a framework from learners used, as you can see. You you have the welcome screen. Um, who is not familiar with the Lanos framework? Um, how about lifelong learning, about Canvas, Flow, and also all, everything? And then we have a basic chapter where you can read in what is personal knowledge management, some backgrounds to know if it's what you want to learn, and then at the learning path, you have an overview and then go through the 12 weeks and also an appendix with some support information how to go deeper yes you could start a learning circle your finder is in my opinion a good start also but um, also all other social platforms they can find people who would like to join it and it will be possible yes this is shrieky have nicht gefunden So maybe you could give me a, um, a could everyone raise a hand who is using already this memex or even one kind of second brain set a custom method? <clears throat> okay. And The ones who are not using it already, what do you feel? Um, will, would it something you want to use? Would start a circle building it? Yeah, correct. Then maybe it would be also interesting as you here are in the lost con to see who else has raised their hand for what to do use it and build a circle and also from from our experience the so ones who have already such a um, set custom or second frame methodology um, often they are also interested in extending the knowledge go deeper for it um, in our learn passes and um, in the rounds we had also people who have done already for some while this knowledge management and found it also benefiting to go deeper. And in fact, also for me, I'm still continuing and learning this. It's, I can't like to compare it with getting things done where it's a lifelong journey. It's always refining, extending. I learn more, I change my workflows and this keeps my workflows also alive that I think about it, how they are changing. So there I would like to encourage you, find a learning group, extend your settled custom, build your settled custom and deep your understanding, grow your understanding and contribute your understanding to everyone. Thank you. As we have still time, um, if you have other questions coming up, other discussions, feel free. No, I think we should we should uh, close the session because the next one, the next. It's, it's uh, story, yeah. Yeah. It's so if you do okay. have question, we do also have the yeah. uh, uh, yeah. Discord server. Put so feel chat. welcome yeah. to ask yeah. time. Okay, and you can also okay. connect me uh, on you. LinkedIn, which is my uh, normal way of communicating, connecting, and feel free. We'll be happy. See you then. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you.